Welcome back to News Geelong on this Wednesday evening. Statistically, one in five children will be sexually abused before the age of 18. Geelong-born Hetty Johnson is the founder of Brave Hearts. Incorporated in 1997, Brave Hearts has forged a movement for change in how government, the judiciary and the wider community deal with child sexual assault. Now with overwhelming local business support, a Geelong Brave Heart organisation has been established. News Geelong spoke with the newly appointed convener, Mr Ross Sinnott. Well, Brave Heart is uh, an organisation set up to help identify areas where children may, may be abused and to help people, uh, educate people on overcoming that situation. Now this only came up about a month ago at a business breakfast and you were moved by the speaker. Uh, yes, it was at the Geelong Business Club on the 19th of June and Hetty Johnson, uh, founder and executive director of Brave Hearts Australia, spoke. Uh, it was an amazing uh, and passionate speech. Normally at the business club there is a lot of people who uh, maybe talk while the speaker's speaking. There was mm -hmm. silence this night. Uh -huh. And uh, at the end of the meeting, Hetty suggested or asked that would somebody assist her, and a number of people did. Wow. Got up and assisted her. And you were one of them? Yes, I was one of them. <laughs> I, I, I was drawn up. I, I have three grandchildren and uh, the statistics of one in five mm. uh, children under 18 uh, being affected by child abuse mm. really, really hit home, as I know with a number of others at the meeting. So the business community in Geelong are well supportive of this. And what's the plan for the progress of this? Well, we're, we've, uh, we're forming a committee. I have 16 to 20 people who have agreed to be on the, on the committee, which is yeah. really marvellous. And Hetty is absolutely thrilled about that. And uh, we'll, we'll be having our first meeting in about a fortnight. Right. So if people are interested in finding out more, perhaps if they're interested in volunteering or if they need some help for themselves or their own children or grandchildren, could you give us a, a contact for that? Yes, you, you can contact me at, on my email, at optusgeelong.com.au mm -hmm. um, and certainly uh, we will have access to the Queensland uh, telephone lines and other uh, facilities like that. More news from Coastal Torquay as Debbie Meany discovers the progress of the Torquay Caravan Park redevelopments. The Torquay Foreshore Caravan Park has gone through some major changes recently. With the power upgrade on track, the 12 month permit holders have already been reinstated on site. I have with me today Richard Davies, the Great Ocean Road Coast Committee CEO, to talk to me about it. Debbie, it was important to have uh, reliable power supply into the park. We've got some 600 sites and new caravans, uh, new annexes all have different sorts of equipment than maybe we, we used in years gone by. So it was important to upgrade the, the overall power supply um, to suit what campers now bring to the parks on their holidays. And improvements like this don't come cheaply. How much has it been injected into these works? This year alone we're injecting into Torquay Park $1.7 million um, of which around a million dollars is coming from the Great Ocean Road Coast Committee, our own funds, um, and we've received a $750,000 grant from uh, the State Government. Scheduled completion date is uh, 31st October, we may finish slightly earlier uh, and budget is several percent under, so we're very pleased with how it's progressing. And what other plans are in motion for the caravan park? Well, we have uh, a new access policy that's come in uh, by, uh, from the state government uh, early this year, so we need to look at how that's going to work over the next 12 months or so. Um, we have uh, further plans for development of uh, one of our lawn caravan parks down at, uh, on the foreshore at Lawn, and uh, works down there will commence uh, in 12 months' time. And you're getting some new vans, is that right? Uh, we're installing new cabins uh, around on the surf beach side of the park and we have five new cabins coming in in late August uh, that people will be able to, uh, to uh, rent from us over the holiday periods. This is Debbie Meany from the Torquay Foreshore Caravan Park for News Geelong. Thank you Debbie. Now research shows that even small reductions in speed have huge road safety benefits. Well, 
all schools, primary, secondary, state and private, have 40 km speed limits on school days, mornings 8am to 9.30am and afternoons 2.30 to 4pm. The reduced speed zones have introduced in 2003 have resulted in the number of casualty crashes around schools being reduced by 29% at the end of 2008. And now a plea from a local mum. On a stretch of road between a childcare centre and a kinder and a school, it's along 8.30 in the morning and the traffic is not adhering to the 40 kilometre speed zone. This is important for our children's safety and people need to slow down. And Moira, a mum who's dropping off her children, have you got any concerns about the speeds that people are going in the school zones? Yeah, I don't think anybody adheres to the 40 and um, the amount of trucks and buses that just zoom past and, and people don't cross over at the crossings and I think it's particularly dangerous at this point, yeah. Yeah, I think it probably um, the kinder starts at quarter to nine, so the school doesn't start until nine, and if you hang around, it gets worse with the traffic congestion and then people getting later for work as well, and I think they probably speed up in the next 15 minutes rather than slow down. Oh, please slow down, because it's uh, not only my children's safety, but your own, it's everyone. So remember, keep to the speed limits. This is News Geelong on this Wednesday evening and as we go to a break and return with sport and weather after this.